Hi, I'm Jenny Benson. I am a final year friendship business management student and I'm running for VP education in the upcoming elections. Okay, Jenny. Um, how does your previous experience uh, make you qualified for the position that you're running for? So I have been the Gen Rep on the SRC and then I am currently the undergrad arts convener as well. Mm. Um, as a Gen Rep, I kind of it was more engaging with students. So uh, we were running bake sales um, and kind of running drop-ins and things like that. But then this year it's been a lot more academic focused. So I have written a report along with school reps um, around feedback and assessment and I also ran a workshop for feedback which was for staff and students mm. um, and yeah I just I have quite a lot of experience in the SRC I know working quite closely with Kate this year I know kind of what the role what's expected of me in the role and mm. um, and I've kind of built relationships with staff over the past couple of years and I just yeah, I've just had quite a lot of experience in what the role will, yeah. will be. On the question of the feedback workshops, um, mm -hmm. uh, have uh, academics been particularly responsive to yeah. those, and um, and if so, like how how they managed to fit that into their schedules, and is is that an issue? I actually, funnily enough, haven't seen it as an issue. I thought it would, to mm. be honest. Um, but it's just constant emailing. I was working for that specific workshop, I was working with Wendy Anderson, a professor in English Lit, and also the Deputy Dean of Learning and Teaching in the College of Arts. And then um, she just kept emailing, emailing student uh, staff, and I was in charge of getting student engagement. But right. we had about we had about 35 sign up, and there was about 20 odd staff and 10 students right. and obviously not all of them turned up some of them didn't but it was good to get that engagement and staff are really keen to hear students feedback and right. kind of get in a room with students to really see what they want so okay. I've not found it as hard as I thought I would this year. One of your campaign, uh, one of your specific campaign policies was mm -hmm. uh, you want to see um, uh, more uh, con to continue campaigns uh, yeah. that the SLC wants to do. Could you be a bit more specific yeah. on new campaigns that you want to see um, established? Yeah, sure. Sadly, I couldn't put that in my manifesto. There wasn't enough words. Right. But I think it's things like the tuition fee rise that mm. um, we weren't consulted about. It's things like that. I think it's making it clear that the SRC doesn't support things like that and that right. we have a strong voice and we do represent the students. Mm -hmm. um, and I think things like protests maybe quite controversial but I think things like protests and just getting our strong voice out there right. to support issues that are important to students like dictionaries um, for international students and exams right, yeah. there's kind of worry over that at the moment things like that but I protests not be overly an overly political uh, measure for the SRC to take I think personally I believe no I think the SRC does have a strong voice and it's there to represent students and that is a way of, you know, the SRC has become less political over the past few years and right. I, I think moving back towards political issues isn't necessarily a bad thing for the future. Okay, okay. Um, are there any other campaigns that you would uh, like to see? No, I think it's supporting issues that are important to students, like free Wednesday afternoons. Yeah. Um, you know, the exams for international students, but mm. also things like Brexit. Right. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Brexit, tuition fee rises, mm -hmm. things like that. Bigger what, issues. Okay. What What exactly would be the course of action for the SOC uh, to take with regards to this potential to to the to the tuition to the potential tuition fee rise? What would be what the would course our of action? Yeah. What would you I do? Think I think obviously I'd have to discuss if I was in the position with the other SAPs, mm. but I think it's important to show that we are against it because we are. Mm -hmm. um, we think it's it was a bad move for Scotland's higher education institutions and higher edu education institutions in general. Right. Um, and I don't. I, I haven't thought of specific actions, but mm. I mean just finding a way. So cross that bridge when you come to it, basically. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah okay. Um, one of the, one of the more specific areas of your. Um, of the manifesto is the uh, the establishing of a portal uh, on Moodle for mm -hmm. feedback. Um, you've mentioned before that the um, your your predecessor has yeah. attempted to do this, and now you're trying to do this. It seems as though that this is a project that uh, is being rather difficult to undertake. Yeah. Um, do you mind talking about that? Yeah, and sure. That? Um, Kate, staff are quite reluctant to change, <laughs> mm -hmm. as we all know, and I think. 
it takes time for something as big as what Kate is trying to do. It, it does take time. And I think it's important to go into that role realising that it will take time. But I think it's just supporting what she has proposed to staff and staff are gaining in a more of an understanding of what she wants now and are seeing the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just continuing that and making it clear that students really want their feedback in one place and be able to access it throughout their whole degree. Okay. Um... On the issue of feedback, um, mm -hmm. it's not simply a case of, uh, as you've said in, in the manifesto, of uh, improving the feedback that you get, uh, it's also getting the feedback. Yeah. Uh, one of the issues being um, getting uh, exams back to you in time, yeah. within a reasonable time frame, because uh, there's a lot of complaints about, um, about uh, exams coming back late or being mm -hmm. delayed having the marks delayed, which, okay. how would you tackle that? There has been progress with it this year, I think. As I say, it is just making it clear that it's important to students because staff don't see the... staff, kind of, some staff think that students don't really see the importance in feedback. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important that we build a culture where feedback is important and how I would do that, I'd obviously, you know, I'd have the summer to think about it in the job, but I'm, I think it's important to you know, kind of run these workshops, run conferences, get them together, endorse staff bringing it into their lectures, bringing it into their, their tutorials, things like that. Right. I think it's more building a culture, it's, it's a slow process. I don't believe that at the end of the year mm -hmm. we're going to have every staff member getting feedback in straight away. Right. And, but it's building that. Okay, that's fine. Building on that. Um, another area of your uh, manifesto uh, is uh, wanting to wanting teaching to become more diverse and equal. Mm -hmm. um, would you mind elaborating on yeah. that? I think this is quite a tricky one um, because a lot of these issues are for student support that's under their remit. Um, but I think there is a lot of work that the VPA can do for that. And I think it's m I, what I would like to do is just take a lot of the student support's work to the academic conferences and meetings that I attend and you know making staff aware of what's going on in welfare with and, and with students um, so I think I, w I, w I want to work closely with student support and their projects and kind of but also taking that towards academics um, okay, okay. are there any specific areas of the education that you want to want to, to more diverse and equal I think I think, I mean, I could mention specifics like engineering. I know students in engineering who all of their course documents are says he instead of, you know, just they or she. It's not very inclusive and it's about making academics aware of including, you know, the LGBTQ plus community, community ethnic minorities, gender, all, the, all these types of things. Has this been something that uh, students have come specific to the SRC? To discuss is th is this a few, yeah. a few? Yep. okay any so it's, is it, I suppose you talk a lot about uh, you wanted to represent the voices of students yeah um, I mean how many would constitute enough for you to to push forward this particular this this campaign I think I mean it wouldn't necessarily be a campaign it's just you know there are communities on campus like the LGBTQ plus community. Who may feel un who do feel underrepresented? I feel and have they spoken to you about that? Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, a few specifically, but I mean, I don't have not the organisation as a whole. Yeah, no, right, yeah, okay. and I think it's just important to represent them. Okay. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, let's have a look. So uh, about um, the SLC has had a bit of a issue. Uh, mm -hmm recently uh, about the lack of contested positions. Yeah. Um, again, this goes back to the idea of uh, representing students. How can the organisation stand there and say, we want, want to represent the voices of students and yet offer you know, not many uh, sides to particular debates in, as regards to the number of candidates? Yeah. Um, for example, you know, I suppose ultimately what I'm trying to say is how can you claim to be have a, a, a large, broad representation when there's only one person going for a specific yeah. role? I think that's a fair question. I think um, 
Just students running for positions is a huge problem that we need to look at and I'd love to be able to have the chance to look at that in, in a year as we pay it. Mm -hmm. um, I think though we do still, these students, although they're unopposed, they still care about the position that they're running for mm -hmm. and they do want to represent these students, otherwise they wouldn't have ran. And I think, you know, we are quite a passionate group of students who want to make a difference, in mm -hmm. my opinion. And having any students in that position is still, you know, better than not having. Yeah, but I think, we've, I think everybody would, would agree that there would need to be more than one choice. Yeah, yeah, no, I do agree. I do agree and I think that we do need to engage students more. It has proved difficult for the whole time that I've been at uni. I've been here, this is my fifth year. Mm. And I know every single year there has been, you know, low, I'm not, I'm not many people running. And yeah, it's a problem and we do need to face it. But we, we still do represent the students and every single student on council. Mm -hmm. Although they may be unopposed, they do care. I was unopposed last year for undergrad arts convener. Would you, and have, I, would you have preferred to be opposed? Yes, definitely. Okay. Definitely. I think it's important to be opposed because as well, you know, you, you, you merit the job then at the end of the day. You, you, want, you want to do that job and I think that is important. But also unopposed students can really care as well, care about the role. Okay. Um, Again, one of the more uh, specific areas of your uh, manifesto is that you want to improve training for class reps. Yes. Um, I'm just interested to know how that's going to be accomplished, uh, what you want to specifically see done. Okay. I think the training at the moment is only two hours long. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's sufficient. I think it needs to be longer. Um, I think possibly even split up. I'd quite like to I'd look I'd quite like to look at how that would work. But maybe doing, you know, for undergrad and postgrad different ones or even by year, um something like that, or even by college to get you, you know, a specific idea of previous issues that um, students have had and how these have been how actions have been taken and you know just I think more comprehensive training on what we actually want to see from class reps how they can really use the role to benefit students and kind of instill the importance of the position mm -hmm. into them before they take the role because as we know a lot of class reps kind of go in and don't do a lot we need to try and get students to be more passionate about the role and I think you know longer training more comprehensive training maybe specific college training would yeah would help that. what would the extra training involve well I mean I don't know, I, I need to look at that a bit more to be honest, okay. but I think, um, I think specifics about what, 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 what past, what, good practice, good, bad yeah. practice. What do, you, what do you think is lack, what do you think, what, are there any specific things that are lacking in the current training? I any think, dimensions? Or? I think specific college training, I think specific issues that have been brought up before, actions that have or not have been taken from that. Um, and how staff have viewed that maybe, maybe bring a staff member in from the college who conduct some meetings, things like that. Could the extra training dissuade people from yeah. wanting to do the representative role? I think it could possibly, and we could maybe trial it for one college or whatever, mm -hmm. and I need to look into that, but I think, honestly, we want more passionate class reps, and we want, we want that extra training and that motivation to do the role, and okay. because if you have a class rep who does nothing, it's just as useless as not having one. So I think it's important that, yes, it could dissuade them, but at the same time, it's better to have better quality class reps, in my opinion. Okay. Um, have you experienced any issues with people, with students actually being prepared to give feedback? Is that also an issue? Or is that a fairly, or do people not really have an issue expressing concerns or wanting to express their ideas on improvement of courses? Is that? Do you mean to staff? To staff or the class reps? Um, yeah, I think the, cl uh, the class rep meetings that my school reps have had have been quite low attendance and yeah, that's, that's a, that is a huge problem. Um, so yeah, th I think there is some kind of distancing with the role where they don't see it as you know, an important role and so they don't kind of want to give feedback or care that to give feedback. So I do think it's an issue, yeah. Okay, well thanks very much Jenny. Thank you very much.